Since Shatawale rose from complete obscurity to take over the Ghana music scene, it has been over a decade and still counting. But the question is, how did he do it from this tiny single room when he was already blacklisted by a vast majority of the most influential people within the Ghana music industry? Was it luck, an opportunity at the right time, or was it a well-documented master plan? Join the violence anarchist family as we go into details of the first rise, the downfall, and the steps Shatawale, aka Charles Niyama Mensa, took to rise again to storm over the Ghana music industry. Charles Niyama Mensa was born into a rich home where the music never stops. The father is always playing and singing reggae. The mother always singing gospel and high life music in the house. Music got into Charles so much so that he would be singing in the classroom even when there is a teacher in front of the class teaching at the Seventh Great Academy Preparatory School. The luxurious flashy lifestyle portrayed by hip hop musicians influenced the young Charles Niyama to pick music as a future career. Due to this career choice when he continued his education at Rineba Secondary School, Charles was often the first person to complete and submit his examination papers. And the reason he finished first is that he does not worry himself to read the multiple choice questions. He just picks random answers and go. And just like every other wannabe musician would do as a student, Niyama performs almost every weekend during entertainment night periods. His performance were so captivating that the school teachers decided to stop worrying about his poor academic performance. Therefore, even if Charles is found sleeping in classroom during teaching hours, the teachers would simply say, He has already found his future career, so he can sleep while he wants. Me and Lord, school, they give me 14 subjects. Oh, Abba, Abba. Immediately after completing SHS, Bandana wanted to enter the music industry right away. But his father also wanted him to further his education immediately. But as determined as Bandana is to follow his musical dreams, he left home along with one of his father's cars to embark on his musical journey. In 2004, he released the song Mokuho featuring Tiny. The Mokuho song became an instant hit. Every radio station in every corner of Ghana was playing this song. One event organizer booked Bandana for a show. The show was more than successful, but when the time came for Bandana to get paid, the event organizer had a long list of excuses after excuses on why he can't pay him adequately. The next event organizer that booked him for a show repeated the same act. This behavior of event promoters refusing to pay him adequately for his services became a repeated pattern. It began to dawn on him that he will not be able to live the flashy celebrity lifestyle he always dream of living as a musician if he does not take a drastic action to collect all the money he rightfully deserves. Mind you, he is not the only musician facing this challenge at the time, but unlike the typical humble Ghanaian who complains and leave everything to God, to Bandana, God helps only those who help themselves. Therefore, he gathered a squad and will march them into the homes and offices of event organizers to demand for his money. And whoever failed to pay gets a beat down. By the time he beat up about four to six promoters or so, news about his attack spread to other promoters. And during that era, before social media even became a thing, promoters and radio presented had massive influence over the growth or death of careers of musicians. Therefore, the promoters collectively influenced some radio presenters as well as sound engineers to blacklist bandana over his attacks. Therefore, bandana's career started crumbling. Now, event organizers have stopped booking him for shows. Some radio stations, especially within Accra, have stopped playing his songs. Sound engineers have also stopped recording his new songs. So, what can he do now? If you, I mean you, watching this video, were in this position of bandana right at this moment, what would you do? Go back home to your father as a prodigal son? Go back to the promoters and apologize? or just remain in the streets and hustle as an SHS graduate who do not even have a WASI certificate whilst contemplating on what to do next.
tourists, you decided to visit Mark Okrekumante, who is in charge of distributing and promoting your album Bandana from Ghana. He tells you that your records did not sell. He has even lost money in the process. You were so devastated. However, since you have some small money on you, you didn't went back home to your rich father nor apologize to the promoters to repair the bent bridges. You decided to remain on the streets and grind anyhow possible until you make it to the top once again. As the days roll into weeks, weeks into months, and then years, the small money on you eventually got finished. Now, you are broke. Your girlfriend has also left you. So, you move from one area to another area to patch with different friends. And when the girlfriends of your friends visit them at night, you either have to sit outside and wait with the mosquitoes or squeeze yourself into people's veranda to sleep. Through all of this, your passion for music was not lost. You were still writing songs. As the years pass by, you will go on to do anything that will fetch you money to survive. You eventually decided to learn how to make beats with just a computer. Therefore, you will buy a Pentium 2 PC and other basic gadgets you will need. You truly learn how to make some basic beats and started recording your own songs in your small single room. Somewhere in 2011, one of your Facebook female friends visited you and eventually became your girlfriend. The excitement was out of this world until you came face to face with the reality on how to get your new songs out to the Ghanaian masses but thanks to the power of Bluetooth connectivity you were able to share the songs with your friends and the friends of your friends while some will find a polite way to tell you that your songs are trash others will tell you they are dope but Ghana is not ready for that kind of dance hall tune therefore you started to blend the local languages she ga and Hausa in your songs and that is where your cousin Blade a resident of Nima who is very active on social media got the idea idea of uploading and promoting the songs on social media platforms. Blade assure you that the promotion is going well. However, there was nothing to show for it. Until one day, Blade managed to get one event organizer to put you on a show at Nima. You went for the show and killed it. It was at this show that you started to believe the power of social media because you saw a couple of guys in the crowd who were singing along some of the new songs you were performing. The new songs that have never ever been played by any radio station in Ghana yet. It was also at this show that you met the Poti and a few other guys who will later become the inner circle members of the Chatter Movement for Life later on in the future. From that day, you made the conscious decision to forget the industry players and build your music career mainly on social media. Therefore, you will go on to create a new Facebook page and a YouTube channel to promote your songs. Gradually, you started getting small, small shows to play, mostly at Tawala Beach. But at this point in your life, you were not even concerned about the payment anymore. You were focused on putting yourself on the map once again. Somewhere in 2012, Bandana received a call from Pop Skinny, who has then become the host of the Kasahari levels on Amtum FM. Skinny invited Wally to come onto the dance hall night segment of the Kasahari levels. Bandana was hesitant to go initially, but Pop Skinny kept on calling and calling and calling. Therefore, Bandana eventually went onto the show and revealed how some influential industry players sidelined him. He also took advantage of the Kasahari levels platform to announce his his new name and social media handle as Chatawale. After this show, the social media pages of Chatawale started growing. More people started following him for his songs. Some event organizers started calling him for shows. Other radio presenters started calling him for interviews. VGMA nominated him for awards. And the category was Best Reggae Dancehall Artist of the Year. And come 18th May 2013, on the night of the award show, Kaki was 
pronounced as the winner. Shatawale felt cheated. He couldn't hold in his frustration and therefore he started kicking and breaking chairs and anything in his way as he exited the building. He and his crew headed over to Tawala Beach to discuss what transpired at the event. Every member of the crew was disappointed in what Shatawale did. They were extremely mad at Wale for burning down the few bridges they've suffered to build with some of the industry stakeholders. At the time, Shatawale was staying with Blade and his mother at Ima Market. They will stay in Ima. So when they got home, Blade's mother came to talk to them. After listening to Shatter's point of view, the mother told the crew to allow Wale to do whatever he wants to do because he's paving his own way and he knows exactly what he wants in life. These words motivated Shatawale so much that he recorded a new day song that same night to both Chatter House, the organizers of the award scheme, and Kaki, the winner of the award. As if that is not enough, he did not stop there, but will go on to social media to upload videos of himself insulting the CEO of Chatter House and other industry stakeholders. These actions generated negative news headlines and discussions across all kinds of media on national televisions, radio stations, newspapers, blog sites, social media, intro trust, drinking bars, and what have you. Kupskini feared for Shatter's career, therefore he invited him once again onto the Kasahari levels on Adum FM at Kukumimle the following weekend. He went and defended his actions at the VGMA award night. And when they were done with the interview and stepped outside, what they came to meet on the streets of Adum FM was shocking. <laughs> So the Nima people feel like, hey, now when we get one old, we can follow him. You see, we will cram up a trucker. No, no, so Okuta, Mr. Logic, we Toyota Corolla, be and a blade cram in my car. Blade no dikang. What did they do me do na mi diachi? And a moto full diachi. Surprisingly, or perhaps unsurprisingly, all the negative news headlines generated by his actions elevated the Shatawale brand. His music got more downloads. His videos got more views. His socials got more followers. Shatta Movement for Life got more members. Bull dog joined the crew as manager. Yeah. Now nah, I know what I do, but smoke we believe. Sometimes I say I send back up believe. And that was when the rest of the crew came to understand that controversy can be one of the greatest tools to success. Therefore, they collectively made a conscious decision to make the Shatawale brand a controversy magnet. Two months after the VGMA incident, he released the video clips for the song Dance Hawking, which will become his biggest hit yet after Mukoho. Since then, it was hit after hit, such as Dance Hall Commando, Everybody Like My Team. When you waist, you can't touch me. Enter the net, my homeland, Oligono, Shatter City, and many more. Planned controversies after controversies such as insulting Samini's mother, calling Stoneboy a cripple, insulting Tech Tak and Obrafo as poor, calling Mac Okrekumante a fool, and a whole lot of unimaginable antics. To the surprise of critics who predicted a second downfall of Shatawale for beefing colleagues like Iwan, Samini, Exdo, VVIP, Chris Wadu, Kwaukes, and many more in the years that followed, the outcome of the beefs shocked them. Come 2014, Shatawale will win the Reggae Dancehall Song of the Year Award, Artist of the Year, and Best Song of the Year Award for Vodafone Ghana Music Awards, Africa Artist of the Year Award from Nigeria Entertainment Awards, Best Entertainer Award from Arama, Best Song of the Year from Ghana DJ Awards, Best Performer of the Year from Bass Awards, Musician of the Year from Jigui Awards. Guinness Ghana signed Shatawale as a brand ambassador in that same 2014. To also go on a musical tour in United States of America. Washington DC, what I mean? All the people who really hate me for Ghana, all the time say we will fly, if it's every day. Don't say you don't like me, and just you watch this and say, suck your mother. And in the last month of the year 2014, Shatawale rushed to the Kolebu Teaching Hospital to donate money and items to the children world. He also acted in the movie Never Say Never. In fact, 2014 was the year of Shatawale.
Valley. 2015 wasn't actually any less though. During Ghana Meet Niger concert, Shakawale joined Sakodi on stage to perform their two songs, Dance Ho Commando and Meiji Wo Girl. Wale's energy impressed Sakodi so much so that Obede booked him for that year's Rapaholic concert. I got the crew and told them this was our chance. You know, we've been performing too much on Sapele stages and Wawa stages, you know. So if we've gotten the chance to be on a stage like Rapaholic, which was Sakodi's show, we need to make a mark. Throughout all of this, Wale was fighting a canker that was bigger than himself. The canker of how events organizers, Gamro, Musica, and other stakeholders handle Ghanaian musicians. While almost every Ghanaian artist is silent over how event promoters and Gamro refuses to pay them adequately, Wale was constantly fighting them and calling for a change in how almost everything is done within the Ghana music industry. Even though Niyama never took his education, serious back in the days but in 2016 he donated tons of school items to some selected schools across Ghana some hospitals and police stations also benefited from Wale's philanthropic activities the shatter movement for life became more successful and more popular that even the two leading political parties in Ghana both used his songs for their election campaigns in 2016 whilst the NDC used the song Mahama Pippa the NPP on the other hand used <laughs> The epic success of Wale attracted top companies like Casapreco, Infinis, and Ezem Bank to sign him as brand ambassador for their products and services. His energetic on-stage performance attracted Rush Energy Drink. The many beefs attracted Boss Baker Beef. After the Storm album attracted Storm Energy Drink. And during the launch of the After the Storm album to tell the story of his tribulation, Wale made it a free show without collecting even one peso from the attending fans. This goes to show that what actually makes the Shatter movement for life the most solid and loyal fan base in Africa goes beyond just controversies. Besides the free shows, how Wale communicates with his fans on personal level across social media platforms like Snapchat, TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook Live is a different vibe no one else does it better than him he also allows the fans to use the brand name sm for life or any of his catchphrases such as rain to sell customized merchandise freely and as if that is not enough shatter also helped promote the businesses of his fans on his social media pages wale is so many things to his fans including motivational speaker when life is dark and full of terror take a stroll on wale's facebook page and you will come across Across inspirational ways, ways of encouragement and motivation. This is why the fans religiously support and fight to defend their champion in every situation as well as hype up every little achievement such as on the 1st September 2016 when he returned from London where he had performed at the Indigo O2. Fans numbering almost 600 rushed to the Kutoka airport to welcome him back. Fast forward 2018, Shatawale was signed by the fastest rising music label in town, Xylophone, which is owned by Nana Pia Mensa, also known as Nam One. Hmm, Nam One. Talking about Nam One, how about I make a video about the Men's Good Saga, the rise and downfall of Nam One? Let me know what you think in the comments section. In 2019, fire critics were speculating that Chas Nyama Mensa's career is dead already. Beyonce released the song already, featuring Shata Wale. This song will expose Wale to a wider global audience. Since his comeback in 2012, critics have been saying that the controversies and vices will bring Shata down. However, it has been over. 10 years already at the time of making this video and Wally still reigns as a hot cake gift of God. Watch out for part 2.